Thank you all. Uh, so I'm Dawn Parzik and I'm here with Melissa and we're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking to you about how we paused our careers, what that means, and then how we resumed them at some point in time. So we are constantly bombarded by stories and advice on how to build successful careers. We look up to people that have drive and passion. And this is actually often code for people willing to dedicate their life to a company and work 60 to 80 hours a week. This type of work isn't sustainable or healthy. It leads to burnout. These stories often drive us to come up with our five or 10 year career goals. And then we follow them with a laser focus. The problem is things change really quickly and 10 years is a long time. Your priorities and values may change during this time. And if they do, shouldn't your career path change along with it? There seems to be this impression that you need to set this career path and stick to it. Navigating away from your preconceived notion of career advancement can derail your, your trajectory. There's many reasons to pause your career and that's okay. It's not going to prevent future career growth. Melissa and I are gonna share our stories of why and how we pause our careers and wrap up with some tips on how you can do this or support those who have. When we talk about pausing your career, I'm talking about diverting from this plan you had in place, taking time off to travel, to care for yourself, to care for somebody else, Making a choice that would stall your career growth, relocated and knowing that if you relocate, you're not gonna get that promotion. Stepping back from being a manager to return to a role as an individual contributor. All of these are pauses. So I'm gonna start with my story, but before I begin, I wanna recognize that our stories are our lived experiences. And we recognize that there were certain privileges that enabled us to pause our careers and not everybody may have those same privileges. I was raised to believe I could have it all. I could travel the world. I could have a career. I could have a family. The problem was I didn't know that I couldn't do all of these things simultaneously. Luckily, somebody shared this quote with me right when I needed it most. And that time was in 2014. My husband and I began the process to foster to adopt. And they tell you when you start the process not to put your life on hold as it can take a while to get placed with a child. So I was very naive and silly and I listened to this advice. And right as we got approved to foster a child, I also accepted a job to uh, advance my career. I was in a place where I wasn't gonna get a promotion and so I needed to leave. The day I gave my notice at my job was the day we found out about a potential match. He was placed with us three weeks after I started my new job. This wasn't a smart decision. I needed time to bond with my son. I couldn't learn everything I needed to do at a new job. I was managing people. I wasn't feeling successful as a parent or as an employee and something needed to change. I couldn't continue walking on this tightrope. I'm very grateful that I was in a position where we had a solid emergency fund set aside and I was able to quit my job. And actually, my spouse did as well, but that's another story. After about six months, I felt I was ready to return to work. The adoption was about to be finalized, so I started interviewing. I received a job offer. At the same time, my husband, who I mentioned was also not working, received an offer for a job in Seattle. The company offered me the ability to work remotely. I realized though, based on my previous experience six months beforehand, that moving and starting a job might not be easy. So going back to work full time was likely gonna be a mistake and I turned down that job. I instead was offered an opportunity for a part-time role writing for a startup. This gave me the flexibility to work the hours I wanted to, choose the days, the times, all of that. It was great. About a year later, my hours had slowly crept up from about 20 to 35 hours a week. So it was clearly showing that I was ready to go back to work full time. 
the company I was working for wasn't able to convert me to a full-time employee. So I started kind of looking. Uh, during the interview process, I was brutally honest about my unusual work history. I had to tell people that this is why I took time off. And this is why I was only working part-time. And I did that because if a company wasn't willing to hire me because I had prioritized myself and my family, that wasn't a company that I wanted to work for. I've been back to work for full-time four years now, um, and my career is continuing to move along the trajectory that I've uh, put in place for it. But sometimes taking a pause isn't about not working completely. And Melissa will share her story with a slightly different perspective. Awesome, thank you, Don. Yeah, um, my story is a little different in that um, I've actually done both. I took a year off early in my career, um, right out of college to take care of my family when my mother passed. And um, while that story is interesting, early career challenges are, are a little different than um, being in the middle of your career and building. So uh, so I'm gonna focus on, on the mid-career challenge. <laughs> um, Really, when we start off um, looking at people from the outside, what you see is the highlight reel, the success, right? You, you see the pictures on social media of, of talks and travels and, and friends and family and, and all of the, the resume stuff that people are doing, and it looks awesome. But kind of going on in the background is a whole lot of chaos. Um, <laughs> and, and working through that is, is its own kind of challenge that, that a lot of people don't get to see. And we don't really open ourselves up a lot to that. Um, so, so a couple of years ago, probably about four or five years ago now, I was working at, um, at a place and I was an individual contributor. I was about to become, uh, I was about to make a two level jump into director. And this opportunity kind of presented itself at a time when um, my company was going through a major transition of being acquired. So, so I made this jump to director and I worked crazy hours and was 95% travel for like a year. And at the end of it, in spite of doing what, um, what looked like a good job, <laughs> um, that role ended and half of the team left with it. And uh, I took it really hard. <laughs> it, it, it felt like failure at the time and I needed some space to kind of step back from that. I was returned to the team I had been um, a director for, um, which was essentially my, my role before the, I had taken the shot at director. And um, I, was, I was there, but the, the emotion was a little too close for me in that, um, in that I was, I was facing these things every day and still felt the guilt of feeling like I failed and I needed some space to kind of see the big picture and put things all in perspective. And for me, my career has never been kind of this ladder or, or step, step up kind of thing. It's always been kind of moving from one thing to the next thing based on interests and based on a general direction, which is, hey, I started in help desk my goal eventually, or at least my first goal, I should say, is uh, founder and CEO, right? <laughs> That's the first big one. So, so in between there, I, I figure out things I need to do. And when I started reflecting on, on what I wanted to do next or, or the skills that I need, what I thought would be really good is moving from that, that management role to an individual contributor role that was more focused on messaging and figuring out how to, how to nail that message. So I, I moved into launches and events and um, worked the conference circuit and wrote keynotes and, um, and did booth messaging for, for the entire portfolio at the same company I had been working with, um, which lasted about a year. And in that time, it was, it was kind of crazy personally in that I was going through a divorce, I was dealing with other things, and um, I was given a gift that looked like my worst nightmare at the time, which was being, uh, my team was made redundant in the chaos of being acquired, you know, multiple reorgs happen and teams are let go. So I was, I was part of that. And with that came a package and a chance to say, okay, I took that year of space mentally to do something else and think about things differently. What is all this perspective stuff? Where, where have I gone? And two books that really kind of helped me in that time were um, The Soul Art of Not Giving a 
blank, and <laughs> um, and a book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things. And the first book, what it really did for me is is give me the ability to, to think about what I really valued in my life and in my career and judge myself and grade myself on those things instead of judging, grading myself on being successful at this thing because my family depends on me and I've got to go, 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 go and work all the hours and all that. And then um, the other one kind of put the business end of, of that perspective in, in letting go and and changing um, priorities in the company and how those things happen in the background. And it's, it's a wonderfully nostalgic trip through the dot-com era as well. So definitely a recommended read. So as, as I was kind of going through, I had a, a decision to make between two roles. And once, once I found that focus and priority and, and thought about where I eventually wanted to be, I ended up um, running into this role on, on LinkedIn for the director of community development at HashiCorp as, as one of the things. And when I read the job description, it read like a greatest hits of everything I loved to do previously and a bunch of stuff that I wanted to learn. So it seemed like the best case scenario. And then of course I had an offer that was still with the other company with a team that I knew and trusted and had worked with for over a decade. And, um, and could um, lead that team. So I was, I was still returning to leadership either way. And when I kind of sat them down and paired them up with my values and, and what I thought of, of the companies, what I, what I found was I was most excited about this community development role. And I, I went through my network and, and really talked to people about the company and about the skills I'd need and how I'd need to position myself for this because, because there were a lot of new kind of scary things happening. This was the first role I would be in where I wasn't the subject matter expert anymore. <laughs> so, so coming into that was, was kind of scary, especially with all the family stuff going in the background and knowing I still needed a bit of a mental break between what I had been doing before and the next thing. Well, at the same time, knowing I couldn't really take a career break in the middle of a divorce, right? When, when the family is relying on you and, and you're working out custody and all that stuff, um, which was totally amicable, but still tough. So kind of, kind of moving forward after, after that choice was made, there, there was kind of a, a lot of things to build and do and, and, and create. And, and it really kind of helped me to, to have that list of of values kind of set aside and, and still very much in the for forefront after, after winning the job. So I could go through and say, okay, how am I, how am I tracking to, to those priorities? How am I tracking to what I really want to accomplish, what I really want to learn? So what happens when you say, oh my goodness, I need to pause, <laughs> whether, that's, um, whether that's actually leaving your job and taking a time to travel or whether that's just kind of changing your focus and, and learning something new in an environment that's safer for you. Um, I, I would say to my point earlier on focus, start with what you value and, and think about those things and, and make a list of, of what you love and, and what's really important to you and, and think about how, how you can maybe work toward those things. <laughs> uh, for me, one of the biggest things was family. And, and also that eventual goal of being a founder and CEO. Um, we're always thinking about success in terms of society, salary and job title, or, or you know, as, as, as parents, you know, kids on the honor roll and sports ball and all that stuff, right? Um, really, when we, what we should be thinking about is, is, is this kind of better measure of, of mental and physical health in loving your life and loving what you do and being in love with where you are in the moment and who you are in the moment because, because those things are amazingly fleeting and, and nothing has taught me that like, like my kids. <laughs> so so those, those job titles and salaries are important, but so is free time. And so is, is enjoying your life while you still have it. And we don't want to discount the fact that money is important. We need to pay our bills. It's not just about going and, you know, having fun. Uh, so being able to take a break does require money. 
Um, I was fortunate that my grandfather, when I started my first job, gave me the advice to pay yourself first. He goes, even if it's only a couple of dollars, $5, $10, as you start making more money, you can start putting more money away. But knowing that you're not spending everything and spending money is fun, but you also need to have that safety net. Um, I call it an emergency fund. Other people call it a rainy day fund or an FU fund. Uh, you can call it whatever it is that you want. But when a situation like this occurs, uh, that is a rainy day. It's pouring, it's torrential rains, like use that fund. The other piece of diving into that emergency fund is setting a budget. You have a different amount of money coming in or you have no money coming in and it's all going out and it's like the panic starts coming as you like you see those bank balances dropping and nothing is being added into it figure out a budget what is it that you need to pay what are those nice to haves that you can really cut down so you build this bare bones budget budget caitlin flanders has uh, written a couple of books about this topic. Um, one is called The Year of Less, where she put herself on a spending freeze and how and why she did this. I recommend putting together a budget. And if you can, trying to live on that budget for a month or two before you dive right in to trying to do this budget. I didn't have that luxury. I made a decision in about a week that I was quitting my job. So we did not have a chance to kind of try out this budget. Uh, but I would definitely recommend that to like reduce anxiety going forward. Uh, Melissa, how did having an emergency fund or budgeting impact your decision to take a pause? Um, it, it, it didn't at first in, in that first pause I took, but in the second pause, it, it definitely helped. And, and what I'll say is the budgeting kind of helped more than the emergency fund because for the for the second kind of pause and evaluate, um, of course, I was mid divorce, so that emergency fund was inaccessible to me. <laughs> um, so, so then what what ended up happening is as part of the severance package, I, I I made that my emergency fund and and started aggressively budgeting and saying, okay, well, how do we figure out how to navigate this as a family who is now going to be two separate families and. And what we do so so that was definitely a part of the decision making pro process and I still revisit the budget all the time. <laughs> kind of kind of going on into interviews, um, one important thing to note is how, how you address that time, uh, whether it's gap time in your career or or um, or just the time you spent doing something different from the thing that that may look more like a traditional career trajectory, right? And what's important there is to think about how you're gonna address it. And, and for, for Don and I both, one thing that was super important to us is being honest about that time and, and talking about what you did during the time, why you did it and how. And um, at the end of the day, any, any company that, that didn't have the understanding of, of why you would do that and prioritize your family and your values, wasn't a company that we wanted to work for. So, so it's important to remember that as part of the interview process, it's not just them seeing if you're a fit for this role, it's you seeing if you're, you're a fit for them and they're a fit for you, right? So, so it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, also using your network. Um, networking is super important and has helped me in, in kind of figuring out my next steps multiple times um, for this last time in particular. I, I use the network pretty heavily and, and talk to my people about kind of kind of understanding how to how to build my um, my experience to match the qualifications of the job in a way that was a little more unique. Um, how about you, Don? Yeah, both that part time job and then the first full time job after that came from people that I had known for years. Um, one of them every time I saw him would be like, so are you ready to come work for me yet? Um, and then every time I would say no, and all of a sudden it was just like, yes, actually, matter of fact, like, let's talk. And so that's why I went from a part time role into a full time role again. Now, you can't always pause. Sometimes you have to work. You can't take time off. So what can you do instead? You can schedule PTO. You can take a sick day. Look if your employer has short-term or long-term leave options. Ask to work flexible hours. 
set boundaries on your work hours. Think about what you value in your career and if it's going in that same direction. If you do need to look for a job, make sure that you're in the right mental space to be able to do that because interviewing when you're not in the right mental space is not gonna go well. Pausing my career, I think Melissa would agree with this, wasn't a difficult decision to make. I knew by doing this, I was taking care of myself and now I'm able to help others as well. Um, I have this sign or this art from Denise Yu handing in my office to continue to remind me that I need to take care of myself first. Um, I'll be sharing a list of resources that you can refer to uh, if you're interested in learning more about pausing a career and then the books that Melissa and I mentioned.